When it comes to the ninjutsu in the Naruto world, there is perhaps no jutsu more famous and more feared than the flying raijin that Tobirama Senju created and was perfected by the fourth Hokage Minato Namikaze. Over the decades since Tobirama would invent the jutsu, Minato would master and pass it down the basic jutsu to his Hokage guards and over 30 years following Minato's death, his grandson Boruto would master the jutsu as well. However, what if somewhere along the way Minato passed down this jutsu to one other person before before he died and what if that person was Kakashi Hadake, the son of the White Fang and future Six Hokage? How would the Naruto story change? Would things end up for better or would they end up for worse? In today's newest installment of Naruto What If, we're going to take an in-depth look at just that. In order for us to find out, we must first establish a trigger point, a fixed moment in time where one decision in the main timeline is changed to set things in motion. In my opinion, the most likely time for Minato to teach Kakashi the Flying Raijin is during the final year of his life in the original timeline. I believe in the aftermath of Kakashi's mental breakdown when he lost Rin because she sacrificed herself for the good of the Hidden Leaf Village, Minato wouldn't just stop at having Kakashi placed into his Hokage guard as an Anbu, but instead he would see the pain and the suffering in his last remaining student and Minato would take Kakashi to the Hokage rooftop in order to speak to him. Looking over the village, Kakashi would be told by Minato that he can't blame himself for Rin's death and that what she did was the most noble thing as shinobi could do for their village but he'd take the accountability as well for not being able to save them and then he'd ask kakashi to take out the flying raijin kunai that he gave to him when kakashi became a jonin he'd say there's no guarantee but perhaps if kakashi had been shown how to perform the flying raijin they could have safely escaped and teleported to minato on the night that rin died and he could have removed the seal from rin's body minato would tell him that it was something that he would have to live with but it was for those reasons reasons he teach Kakashi the flying Raijin and warn him that the training wouldn't be easy due to the Jutsu's chakra requirements which we do have a comparison for in the manga. Genma and two other special Jonin were shown needing to pull their chakra together just to perform the basic variation of the flying Raijin teleportation Jutsu. For this reason Minato's goal would be to have Kakashi attempt to learn the Jutsu on his own without the need for others to pull their chakra together. Obviously the elephant in the room here is that for a majority of the series Kakashi Kakashi's chakra was a tricky subject where he needed to set aside chakra just to beef up his stamina so he could even use the Sharingan but just as we saw Kakashi with extreme motivation train between the 5 Kage summit and the war to get those insane stamina levels I believe here Kakashi would train even harder than he did in the original timeline by this point and get to a point where he can use the flying Raijin without assistance like Genma was required to which it shouldn't be that much of a stretch comparing Genma to Kakashi it's like comparing a Toyota Camry to a Ferrari it's not even in the same class however I do believe that Kakashi wouldn't master this jutsu for several months by which time I do believe he would either learn the jutsu just before Naruto is born or just after he's born but in any event Minato would still die following the Nine Tails attack in the battle with Obito from here not much changes at first I do believe that Kakashi would even be more of a menace to the shinobi who graduated from the academy because any hope they had before will be absolutely crushed. However, as he gained fame as being Kakashi of the Sharingan, he'd also gain a reputation for using a flying Raijin, which would by extension force Mike Guy to become even more powerful in order to keep pace with Kakashi's growth. Eventually, as the years pass by, I think he would give Naruto and Team 7 a rougher time than normal, but eventually the team would earn his seal of approval during that bell test and become their Jonin Sensei. This brings us to our first major changes in the timeline. As they set off for the Land of Waves, I believe that Kakashi after the mistuning attacked them will either place a marker on the members of team 7 directly on their bodies or give them the flying Raijin kunai to keep in their possession or do both at the same time the battle with Zabaza is where things could get interesting I could see Zabaza trying to use water release to blow away the markers that Kakashi throws in the area and I think he might even get him in the water release water prison jutsu however the moment that Kakashi gets trapped I believe he uses the flying Raijin to teleport to one of the members of team 7 and I believe the battle ends as it still did originally with Kakashi busting out the water dragon jutsu and Haku arriving pretending to be an Anbu. With Kakashi's stamina noticeably better than it was in the original timeline, I do believe that Kakashi while he would be fatigued I don't think he'd be on bed rest and I still believe he would train team 7 in chakra control and eventually the rematch with Zabas and Haku would occur. Even though the members of team 7 will have each had his mark kunai and seals placed onto their body, I do believe Kakashi 
Kakashi would give the members of Team 7 a chance to show their worth as Shinobi, leaving Sakura to protect Tazuna and Naruto and Sasuke to fight against Haku so as to not hinder their growth as Shinobi. However, the moment that Kakashi tries to lift his headband and reveal his Sharingan, he gets his hand stabbed by Zabuza. I believe he already made his mind up to mark Zabuza, which I believe he would manage to do some ninja trickery here when he tries to protect Sakura and Tazuna from Zabuza's attack. The moment that Kakashi senses Naruto's chakra leaking out of the seal, I believe that instead of going for the summoning jutsu like he did originally, Kakashi would take advantage of the mist that was supposedly blocking his vision to teleport to Zabuza and in one swift and calculated strike, Kakashi would slice Zabuza's throat and the last words that Zabuza would hear would be, I can see the future and your future is death. Once this is done, Naruto will have already realized that Haku was the person behind the mask and this is where things get more interesting. In the original timeline, Kakashi strongly implied that Haku was stronger than Kakashi and it was something that Zabuza came to the conclusion of as well. But in this timeline, this is a stronger Kakashi Kakashi than originally and he's armed with the flying Raijin Jutsu. I do believe that Haku upon seeing the blood of Zabuza on Kakashi's kunai will know that Zabuza is dead and I still believe a grief stricken Haku would battle against Kakashi with this Kakashi getting the same rage amp that he did when he bodied Zabuza after he thought that he saw Sasuke dead. Seeing Sasuke's body might set Kakashi off here. However, because Sharingan can see chakras of color at some point during this intense battle with Haku versus Kakashi, I believe that Kakashi will notice the chakra still in Sasuke's body and realize that Haku didn't kill him, giving Kakashi just enough reason to stop short of killing the young shinobi. However, their battle will ultimately be interrupted by Gato, but in this timeline, I don't think Haku would start killing everyone the way that Zabuza did instead i believe that kakashi and naruto will be able to bluff using shadow clones like they did in the original timeline before inari and the rest of the citizens show up this leads us to our next major change in the timeline because haku didn't kill sasuke and because kakashi saw firsthand the talent that haku had and Naruto's strong connection with them, I believe that Kakashi would tell Haku that Zabuza made his decision as a shinobi and the life of a shinobi can lead to death. But just as Haku had something precious to protect in Zabuza, it doesn't have to stop at Zabuza and Kakashi would share the way that he spiraled after the deaths of his teammates and after the death of Minato and tell Haku that Kakashi gained something precious to protect in his gaining squad and that Haku can find something precious to protect as well. Just as he bonded with Naruto and protected his friend Sasuke by not killing him, he could find more precious things to protect as well. Kakashi would still go on to give the Shinobi or Tool speech to Naruto on Team 7, weaving in the reality that tools can be used to protect or kill and Naruto still arrived at his declaration that he would change the Shinobi system, that he would make his own Nindo and that his Nindo is to change what it means to be a Shinobi. And hearing all of this, what warm Haku's heart and make him give in to Kakashi's idea of following back to Konoha. I still believe the great Naruto bridge is named after Naruto in this timeline due to the impact that Naruto would have had on the villagers. Back in Konoha, I think things get really interesting is the future of Haku. Back in Konoha, I think where things get really interesting is the future of Haku. I believe the third Hokage upon hearing Kakashi's testament of Haku's skill, how he was able to keep pace with someone like Kakashi, the strongest Jonin in Konoha at that point, I believe here Hiruzen would take Kakashi up on his personal guarantee to have Haku placed under his charge. Hiruzen might have mellowed out in his old age, but he's still the same strategic thinker that started the second and the third ninja wars and getting his hands on the Isolates Kake Genkai would be too much for him to pass up, which is exactly why I think he takes Kakashi up on this offer. But due to Haku being skilled and not a proper shinobi in the traditional sense, I believe that Haku would be placed on Team Kakashi with the rank of Ganin, which while it breaks the traditional three-man team rules we have seen exceptions made both in the number of teammates as well as the number of teammates required to take the tuning exams for instance if Itachi was allowed to take the tuning exams alone without a team then I see no reason why Haku wouldn't be allowed to participate as a fourth teammate eventually on team Kakashi because we've seen the rules bent before having Haku in the tuning exams results in Haku using ice mirrors and subtle ways to copy the answers in the first test and in the force of death. That team is going to breeze through very quickly, but that's only if they get past Orochimaru, which I think they do. 
In this timeline, Orochimaru would still target Sasuke, but he'd run into a tougher fighter with Haku there on the scene helping out. While I believe that Orochimaru does take down Haku and the other members of Team 7, I believe that Orochimaru stays more focused on Sasuke than Haku because the Sharingan Keke Genkai in the grand scheme of things is what Orochimaru is after due to his theory of the Sharingan evolving into the Rinnegan. This means Naruto ultimately gets his seal tampered with by Orochimaru and it gives Sakura one extra person to protect when the sound ninjas show up since Orochimaru probably beats Haku unconscious. Where I see a change is I don't think that Kabuto shows himself to Team 7 in the Force of Death, not just yet anyway. Haku has enough experience in tracking and in the underworld to figure out where the rival teams will likely be at and I pity whichever fools that Haku and Team 7 run into when they gang up on them and they take their scroll. With Kabuto likely dropping out of the preliminary as normal, things get tricky with the number of combatants having to fight, but with Eno and Sakura ultimately double KOing each other, that extra fight that the one combatant in the prelims would have would get tossed out. If for no other reason then it might be unfair, but part of being a shinobi is taking advantage of the cards played and Kabuto did drop out. If they had no problem with Tamari getting a free match originally in the original tuning exams before Dosu got killed, then there should be no issues with the prelims either for someone like Haku getting a pass. Looking at the original tuning exams bracket, Haku would likely be placed into that 10th spot to fight against Tamari, but where things get interesting is that Dosu likely gets killed before the tuning exams so we would ultimately see Shikamaru being the one who ends up with that free match. The tuning exams proceeds exactly the same way that they normally do with Naruto beating Neji and Konkuro dropping out and when it comes to Tamari versus Haku while her win release is a problem I believe that Haku soundly defeats her in battle in a measured approach even flexing on her by trapping her in his ice mirrors and demanding that she surrender which is enough that the third Hokage would be soundly impressed with what he's seen. After Sasuke hits Gar with the Shidori and Konoha crush begins, I believe that due to Kakashi not being one of the Hokage guards, there's a good chance that Hiruzen doesn't have a marker placed onto his body, so Kakashi can't teleport to him. Haku would lead Naruto, Shikamaru, and Sakura after Sasuke and Gar, and I do believe Asuma still ends up having to say Shikamaru, and Shino ends up beating Konkuro. However, with a rampaging Gar, while I do believe that Haku being the there noticeably shifts the scales in battle in Naruto's favor. I believe that Haku would take a back seat when he sees how much Naruto needs his victory against Gar. Even though Haku at this point in the time, due to the training that he would have gotten as a part of Team Kakashi, building on how strong he already was, should be more than powerful enough to take down this one tails Gar, if we're being honest. But that's irrelevant since that doesn't happen. I still believe the third Hokage ultimately dies fighting Orochimaru, but I think in the notes left behind, the third Hokage would have made the recommendation recommendation for Haku to be the one made a tuning, which means in this timeline, Shikamaru isn't promoted right away. Given that nothing from the preliminaries was used to promote people, otherwise Shino would have been promoted given how he handled his fight with Zaku, I think it's more than fair to take the stance. By the time that Itachi and Kisame show up, the only thing that changes is Kakashi is able to flex on Kisame a bit harder, but Itachi still one shots on Tsukiyomi and Tsunade eventually returns as Hokage. Where the next major change occurs is Sasuke giving into the growing influence of the curse mark and seeing the growth of Haku and Naruto. I still think that he leaves the village and leaves his flying Raijin marker behind, so as to avoid Kakashi tracking him, but jokes on him because he's already got a seal placed on his body somewhere. Haku would be the one assembling the Sasuke pursuit team and I think we end up seeing a similar roster to the one sent out. This is where there's a major shift in the timeline. When we look back at Naruto part one, the sound four was struggling with Genma's team of special Jonin who were exhausted from having just completed a mission because Tsunade was working all special Jonin and standard Jonin like dogs. Yet despite them being fatigued, the Sound 4 still needed to gang up on them and still needed to use their curse marks to take them down. Special Jonin are weaker than standard Jonin, which is why in this timeline, Haku being as strong as he is, easily knocking on the door of Kage level at this point. Whichever Sound 4 member that he faces doesn't stand a chance, but I think due to the stakes being this high, I don't think Haku 
Lukaku passes up on the idea of those one-on-one -on -one fights so he can lead the team towards Sasuke, whatever's left behind of the team. Even when a dying Kimi Mars shows up and tries to stall, assuming that Rock Lee and Gar show up to serve on the assist, which realistically, again, a stronger Haku than the one from the Land of Waves are, should be able to beat a dying Kimi Maru, even when he uses his curse mark, though there would be some difficulty at the end of the day, it still results in Kimi Maru dying, because Haku is stronger than Rock Lee and that version of Gar. While Sasuke versus Naruto does happen, I think we have our next major change of the curse. The moment that Kakashi arrives back in Konoha and learns what happens, he takes the S rank mission that Tsunade gives him, and he teleports directly to the kunai that he marked on Naruto or the seal placed on Sasuke, at which point he sees Sasuke using his curse mark and he ends up having to fight Sasuke and subdue him with the help of an enraged Naruto and whenever Haku shows up, Haku joins in. This changes everything in the timeline. Orochimaru was already well aware of the fact that he was running out of time to find a new body, which is why he ultimately chose the one that he did. When Orochimaru sees that Sasuke never makes it to the Sound Village hideout and all the members of the Sound 4 and Kimimaru were defeated by Konoha and the Sand siblings, that's a major crippling blow for Orochimaru who now has to think of another scheme to get his hands on Sasuke. Meanwhile, back in Konoha, things have a major change in the timeline, but it comes down to Sakura first of all. In the original timeline, Sakura only went to Tsunade to become a medical ninja because she saw the damage that Sasuke did to Naruto's body, leaving him like a mummy and heartbroken that he couldn't bring Sasuke back to the village, which is what led to her becoming a medical ninja with a promise that she would help Naruto bring back Sasuke next time. Normally in these situations, I am a firm believer Sakura doesn't make this choice, but in this timeline, I think things are different because there would be noticeable damage on Naruto here. And I do think that's enough for her to go train with Tsunade. During the two and a half year time skip, I believe that Naruto would still go off with Jiraiya to train because of the Akatsuki threat and Kakashi would train Haku and Sasuke more hands-on, paying very close attention to Sasuke and his Sharingan training and tackling the darkness in his heart. This is also where I believe there would be some major changes to the timeline, particularly with Kakashi being hands-on with Sasuke and Haku being able to relate to Sasuke when it comes to the pain of both losing his family because of his father's betrayal when he was a child and Zabuza dying at the hands of Kakashi. Between these two things, I believe that Sasuke will for a time be able to suppress the urges of the curse mark and during the training with Kakashi. I believe that despite not having the drugs of Orochimaru pumped into Sasuke, during their three years together to enhance his growth. I still believe that Sasuke would grow at just as fast as the rate, and I argue he'd even grow even faster, and here's why. When Sasuke clashed with Haku in the Land of Waves arc, you saw to a degree the way that Sasuke got competitive with Haku during their first clash, and Zabuza had to warn Haku by patronizing him to stop holding back against Sasuke because Zabuza was beginning to have doubts if Haku really meant what he said about not wanting to kill Sasuke. I do think that Haku being so far ahead of Sasuke Sasuke at this point ends up serving as a pretty big rivalry boost for Sasuke due to not wanting to be left behind and knowing that somewhere out there Naruto is being trained by one of the legendary Sani. During his two and a half years training with Kakashi, I believe that Sasuke would have added at least one more change in chakra nature to his arsenal, which isn't crazy to suggest because Sasuke learned fire release in a week, which his father said shouldn't have been possible and he learned lightning release in only a few days. But for the purposes of this video, I'm going to go with water release just because Sasuke would would have wanted something to counter Itachi and Sasuke's goal is to take him down. During the two and a half year time skip, I strongly believe that Haku would have been promoted to Joni and potentially even get his own team again to look after, further continuing down the path that Kakashi set him on in terms of finding something new and precious to protect. But I also believe that Sasuke would have taken the leap to Joni in the same way that Neji did in the original timeline, which means Konoha would have three brand new Joni. In fact, due to the watchful eye of Kakashi, I believe that Sasuke will have more control using the curse mark. However, it's debatable if he would have as much skill using the curse mark as he did in the original timeline since Orochimaru did oversee that training. So I'm going to split the baby here and say that Sasuke has some skill with the curse mark, but he still gets the full 10 times multiplier that just using the curse mark gives. From here on, things continue the same way they did originally. Shikamaru likely ends up getting cozy with Tamari during the work they do on the tuning exams together. Assuming, of course, Shikamaru is promoted it at some point during the two and a half years which i'm gonna assume is the case since we don't count anime filler in these what ifs so we're just gonna assume that the tuning exams were still held twice a year during this two and a half year time skip which gives these two the time to realize they get warm tingly feelings around each other whenever they talk naruto when he returns to the village 
gets a gut punch of a lifetime by seeing that both Haku and Sasuke have been made into Jonin, but I believe that this version of Naruto, while he still would have failed to master the Nine Tails at this point, he does come back around the same level he did before. The newly reunited Team Seven would have a much easier time completing the Bell Test against Kakashi, particularly because Naruto and Sasuke seamlessly fall in line with each other during the task at hand. Naruto seeing how much Sasuke's improved and knowing that he's still roughly as far as behind him as he was in the original timeline by this point in the story, it was set a fire under. Naruto to train to get stronger. However, Gar being captured, it changes everything fast. I do believe because it deals with the Akatsuki, Tsunade would have Haku on that team since the stakes are as high as they are. Because we have no idea if Kakashi ever visited the Sand Village, which I strongly doubt. Given Chio's reaction to him, I'm going to assume that the team still needs three days to travel there. But given this current Gar rescue team would be way more of a power than before, given that Sasuke's there and Haku's there and Kakashi's there with the flying Raijin, I still also think that Team Guy would be sent as backup, but the battles with Data and Sorcery, they're going to play out way different than before. For starters, I could see Sasuke joining Kakashi when Naruto goes on his rampage after Daedara, and I could see Chiyo and Sakura being joined by Haku, forcing each of the Akatsuki members to face a three-man team individually. This creates huge problems for Daedara and Sasori. Starting with Sasori, having Haku there is a major issue because just given the fact that Haku at age 15 was already strongly implied by Kakashi and Zabuza to be stronger than Kakashi, this version of Haku after two and a half years of training would be stronger than the Kakashi we see in Naruto volumes 28 to 47. That's going to be enough to do some serious difference in the fight with Sasori, particularly when Sakura breaks a puppet that he's hiding in and Haku being able to use those ice mirrors to use any defensive purpose. It allows for the fight against Sasori to go smoother. And I think even when Sasori used the 100 puppets, the presence of Haku being there is enough that I don't see Chiyo getting hit by one of those poisons and the team ends up bringing him down. And I think between Haku and Sakura, one of them would end up asking Sasori about Orochimaru, which means that Sasori tells her he has a spy at Tenchi Bridge that he was going to meet. In the Daedara battle, Daedara just gets cooked. Even though Naruto is in a rage, the sight of Sasuke might push Daedara to do something stupid himself since Sasuke is Itachi's younger brother. Between having Kakashi there for backup and having someone like Sasuke who can use long range jutsu on Daedara and Kakashi having the combination of flying Raijin which Sasuke can throw those kunai at him and having Kamui and the Raikiri there are enough combinations there to push Daedara into a corner and take him down because Naruto being there he can't use his trump card to blow himself up because the Akatsuki need to capture Jinchuriki alive. This battle ultimately ends with Daedara being captured and brought down. While Chiyo would still die reviving Gar, the sight of Chiyo using a life for life jutsu to bring Gar back to life would stir something deep inside of Haku and Sasuke who would think of Zabuza in the case of Haku and Sasuke think of his parents due to this Kakashi having higher stamina now I could see him not being stuck in the hospital like he was in the original timeline and because team seven isn't down an additional member Donzo wouldn't have a reason to have Sai sent from the root organization to Orochimaru's hideout. The sight of Naruto losing his cool and having to use Jiraiya's ceiling tag would be enough for Tsunade to have Yamato placed on Team 7 to deal with their Naruto problem since Yamato does have Hashirama cell. 10 days later, I believe the newly expanded Team 7 would meet Kabuto and run into Orochimaru due to this sick and dying body Orochimaru who still has 6 months before he can move into a new body. I believe the fight ensues is much different than the one we got in the original timeline. For starters, Naruto is more level-headed here and he doesn't just jump into his four-tail state. I think a battle of Team 7 with Kakashi and Haku and Yamato would be too much for the duo of Kabuto and Orochimaru to overcome. Assuming that Sasuke is just as skilled in Genjutsu as he was in the original timeline, which I'm gonna assume, if it ever comes to him using Genjutsu, he's gonna use the Uchiha clan's hidden jutsu for the Sharingan, which is the demonic illusion shackling stakes, which would be enough to take out either Kabuto or Orochimaru. But battling three Kage level Shinobi and Kakashi with the Mangekyo and the Flying Raijin, Haku with Ice Release, and Sasuke with the curse mark and then three Jonin level Shinobi with base Naruto, Sakura, and Yamato. They either capture or kill Orochimaru and Kabuto at the end of this. 
Assuming that someone like Kabuto is kept alive since he is the weaker of the two, and Orochimaru being wanted dead for killing the third Hokage and the fourth Kaze Kage, I could see Kabuto joining Daedara and being interrogated by people like Ibiki to gain information regarding the Akatsuki, and given that Kabuto doesn't have a built-in Genjutsu defense, the location of the hideouts that Orochimaru had, the main hideout that had that notebook on the Akatsuki, would be discovered, and by the time that Daedara is broken, the Leaf Village will have had more than enough time during that six months between the Tenchi Bridge arc and the start of the Dakoski suppression arc to have raided Orochimaru's hideouts, released whatever prisoners are there, and taken whatever data that they need. At some point, due to reading Kabuto's memories, it would be discovered what Donzo did during Kabuto's childhood, since Tsunade would likely be curious how Orochimaru and Kabuto linked up in the first place, which would lead to a confrontation with Donzo, who likely tries to pass off his actions as having been in the best interest of the village when working under the third Hokage. By the time Hidan and Kakuzu show up, having that notebook on the Akatsuki members, it absolutely changes quite a bit. While we aren't told specifically what's in the notebook, in the manga afterwards and we don't see it get brought up again in the manga at any point in the story likely because by the time that they got the notebook the Akatsuki were losing members quickly and they didn't have any info on pain outside of the intel that Jiraiya gave them I'm not going to take a ton of liberty as to what the intel was but at the very least having the, some of the limited intel is better than none of it during this part in the timeline due to the circumstances being different I don't believe Naruto would be undergoing the change in chakra nature drill training because it wasn't expected of him as a Ganin, and Kakashi only thought about teaching it to Naruto after hearing about the unusual growth of Sasuke, and it wasn't until then that the possibility of using Shadow Clones ever crossed Kakashi's mind to apply to someone like Naruto to get stronger. I still think Hidon and Kakuzu kill Asuma, but this time, when Shikamaru's team is allowed to go out on their revenge six days after his death, which, reminder, the anime changed at the three days, I think Tsunade again sends out Team 7 as backup, and the the battle with Hidan and Kakuzu goes a lot differently now that Shikamaru has all of his shogi pieces available at front. Even with the reveal of Kakuzu having multiple hearts and having curse mark Sasuke there to have someone to give them the ability to fly and Kakashi having flying Raijin combos with Raikiri and Kamui and Haku having ice release, particularly those mirrors that give him those insane speed amps, Hidan and Kakuzu get bullied and ganged up on and eventually take down. It will be at this point during the downtime of the next month that I believe that Itachi would find a way to manufacture a battle with Sasuke because Itachi would be nearing the end of his life and he would want to die at the hands of his brother. Likely catching Sasuke when he's on a mission with Team 7 and catching him under a Genjutsu to speak to him and I still think Itachi finds a way to do the same with Naruto as a backup plan and an off chance that Obito got his hands on Sasuke. He'd have Shisui's crow pop out at the sight of Itachi's Mangekyo Sharingan whenever Sasuke transplanted Itachi's eyes into his own. Before leaving his mission, I could see Sasuke Sasuke having foresight to stick the flying Raijin kunai in a tree to prevent Kakashi from teleporting to his location to interfere, but due to not knowing that the flying Raijin marker never fades away after it's placed on your body physically, he isn't out the woods yet because Kakashi can just show up at any moment. I think this battle of Sasuke versus Itachi goes much the same as the one in the original timeline, with Itachi in total control, able to kill Sasuke multiple times in the fight and doesn't do it, and due to Sasuke never having created Kirin in this timeline, the fight ends much sooner than before. But here's where we have our first major change. While Sasuke in the original timeline did absorb Orochimaru into him and he did emerge from his body to fight Itachi, this Sasuke never did this in this timeline. The curse mark does give Orochimaru's chakra and consciousness inside of it. His revival via the curse mark requires someone to have a pretty significant chunk of his flesh used as a conduit. That doesn't apply here because in this timeline Sasuke never absorbs any part of Orochimaru into him and there is no physical flesh to use the reverse curse seal summoning jutsu. Meanwhile, I could see Itachi adjusting his plan from the original timeline, where instead of having Kisame posted up outside through Cha hideout, Kisame is sent to run interference to prevent Team 7 from getting in the way of Itachi's fight. I think there's a chance this battle ends with Kisame falling due to the increased power, due to the six month gap between Naruto returning to the village and this current battle that's taking place. Kakashi at this point in the timeline will be stronger than he was in the pain arc and Haku would, would have gone from being around Mangekyo's Sharingan, Sasuke who fought against Killer B level to being somewhere closer to 
through Seismo Jiraiya's power level. Due to Kakashi having lightning release and Haku being able to use Ice Release to freeze the water and Kakashi having combo attacks via Kamui and Raikiri, I can see a high difficulty battle with Team 7, which would be Haku and Kakashi, Naruto and Sakura and Yamato, all against Kisame, wrapping up around the time that Sasuke versus Itachi ends with Itachi dying. However, due to Kakashi having the flying Raijin, I could see Kakashi getting to Sasuke before Obito does, and that changes everything. This means Sasuke never learns the truth about the Uchiha Massacre from Obito and stays with the village. Itachi's body is taken back to Konoha as well, since he is a former Konoha Shinobi, and the bodies of Shinobi contain many secrets. However, this is where we run into some problems. Just as Inoichi went through the memories of the dead corpses that Pain used, I believe after Tsunade removes Itachi's eyes to transplant them into Sasuke to future date, Inoichi is going to be ordered to look through Itachi's memories for information concerning the Akatsuki, and this is where Pandora's box is open. While Kakashi trains Sasuke with the Mangekyo, likely having to use Flying Raijin to teleport the moment that he uses his Sharingan, and Sasuke sees it due to Itachi's Amaterasu transcription seal being activated like it did when Obito spoke to Sasuke, while Kakashi dodges that bullet, Inoichi will learn the truth about the Uchiha massacre and bring that information to Tsunade. This becomes a major issue because while they would have gotten all of Itachi's info about the Akatsuki, including the fact that the leader has the Rinnegan, which would definitely blow Jiraiya's mind because Itachi has seen pain in the timeline, they would have also uncovered the truth about the massacre and I believe that Tsunade would be forced into a tough spot. Shikamaru's father would probably be looped in and and they would likely make the decision to keep the information top secret at her orders but Tsunade would confront the elders and she would have a tough decision to make on Donzo. The third Hokage he was pissed about the decision that Donzo made but he didn't throw him in jail for trees or anything like that which leaves Tsunade's hands tight but Tsunade is gonna have to make a decision until Sasuke got the truth about Itachi later on. However I don't think she does so right now but I do think she warns Donzo to not make a move on Sasuke to tie up loose ends about the Uchiha nor could he actually do so since more people know about the massacre now i could see jiraiya heading to the rain village with kakashi being there with them due to the flying raijin being made available and knowing that he's going up against someone with the rinnegan and because kakashi's a master to disguise himself it's a win-win kakashi's presence there during the battles with konan and the six paths of pain it changes everything because if a buffoon like jiraiya could figure out how to kill several of the pains and then still figure out how some of the jutsu work i see no reason why kakashi couldn't make things a lot easier especially given that Kakashi 1 isn't an idiot and 2 he'd be able to buy time for Jiraiya to go into Sage mode faster. I take it a step further because Jiraiya figured out that the real one wasn't among them. Between himself and Kakashi they figure out that Nagato is transmitting his chakras somewhere from within the village high up and due to them fighting in the village when they finally confront Nagato he can't use Chibaku Tensei because he's not destroying a chunk of the village to take them down. At this point I could see Jiraiya being able to talk no jutsu Nagato and this ultimate screws Obito when this happens and Obito has the nuclear option. It doesn't take much for Kakashi to teleport back to Konoha to get Tsunade, teleport back to make assurances about making amends to what Konoha did to the Rain Village during the Second Ninja War and it's at that point if you're Obito you're boxed in your king is about to be taken because Nagato is the one piece that you can't afford to lose off the board. This is where the nuclear option comes. Obito has to attack here because if Nagato's talk no jutsu by Jiraiya and agrees to make amends for murdering the other Jinchuriki, that leaves Obito with no way to seal away the eight and the nine tails. At the very least, he'd have to kill everyone here in this room and take back Madara's Rinnegan back from Nagato so he could seal the remaining Jinchuriki. The problem though is the moment that he shows up having a battle with a crippled Nagato who could just use the six pass of pain again after Kakashi teleports back to whatever mark he had left behind by the bodies of the pains and places the chakras back into them. That's going to be tough for Orange Mask Obito who would be below Sage Mode Kabuto and above Seven Gate Mike Guy. Having Sage Mode Jiraiya with both toes on his shoulders with all those options they have and Tsunade unleashing her Byakugo seal and Konan with her paper chakras jutsu and Nagato using 
using a six pass of pains in battle and kakashi who on top of having flying raijin likely figures out the connection between his sharingan and obito's i could see obito being brought down and unmasked and this ultimately shatters kakashi to see his friend obito behind the mask and as the unconscious obito's taken to jail in konoha with chakra seals placed onto his body and likely obito's remaining sharingan removed from his body probably given it to kakashi kakashi is spending the next few days repeating the words it's because you let rin die in his mind all while konan and nagato sit in a cell somewhere going yahiko was right all along about that not being madara uchiha the timeline changes in a major way because at least zetsu as the lone akatsuki surviving member and he's gonna have to crawl back into whatever hole he was hiding in the last thousand years trying to scheme up a way to revive kaguya i could see nagato unsealing the other biju and having them return to the villages though you'd have the elders saying to tsunade they might as well enjoy the spoils of war which i totally get that logic konaha with the tail beast from the one tails all up to the seven tails and the nine tails which naruto wouldn't have mastered at this point in the timeline plus sasuke who eventually trades in his mangekyo sharingan for the eternal mangekyo sharingan which at some point shisui's crow comes out of naruto and it programs sasuke to be loyal to konaha no matter what and nagato's renegade being sealed away somewhere after unleashing the biju and jiraiya still being alive and kakashi having both mangekyo sharingan Kona Konoha would be unstoppable. However, I could see Tsunade using this entire ordeal to force a five Kage summit like her grandfather did and try to negotiate from a position of strength to broker peace pointing out that had the five nations been on talking terms the akatsuki wouldn't have been able to get this far in the first place i could see her offering to return the biju but not for free like hashirama did but instead she's gonna broker a peace treaty likely give the one tails back to the sand village as a sign of loyalty since they did team up to fight the akatsuki which might piss some of the other kage off however the fact of the matter remains gar after getting kidnapped by the akatsuki tried to rally the five kage they wouldn't listen tsunade has all the cards right now konoha is absolutely stacked in power they have all the strength of leverage to force a negotiation she's gonna find a way to get them on the same page to hunt down zetsu who eventually gets turned into fertilizer when he's found this ultimately means that kaguya doesn't get revived due to sasuke already being programmed to stay loyal to konoha when he learns the truth about the uchiha massacre that has no change in effect on sasuke's mental state of mind because he has to stay loyal to konoha it's debatable whether or not they break the cycle of hatred between the two which brings me to my question do you guys think that naruto eventually masters the nine tails in this timeline and do you think naruto and sasuke could break this cycle of hatred